welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Today, after about 10 months of sitting on the sidelines doing absolutely nothing, I'm going to see if we can do something with this machine. It was originally a dream to have the opportunity to play with an RF machine. The magic, the hype. I was expecting great things of this technology. It's a bit like the ugly girl at a dance, just sitting on the sidelines. Well, today, we're gonna to see if we can give her a facelift, make her more attractive. Because, to be honest, this is almost a boat anchor at the moment. So the beam changes in diameter from when it comes out of the tube to when it reaches the front of this machine maybe by five or six millimeters. Change of beam diameter means change of intensity. And change of intensity means change of cutting performance. The higher the intensity in the beam, the more efficient your beam is at cutting. At the moment it's called tangerine tiger, but in realistic terms, it's probably only a tangerine kitten. I'd like to use this machine because it essentially has got some good mechanical components on it. It, the laser technology is not keeping pace with the ability of this machine's mechanics. With all the hype and the magic that I'd heard about this technology, I was expecting this to be a wonderful learning journey when I started this off 20, 21, I can't remember, 21 sessions ago. It turned out to basically be a journey into disillusionment. And, and I've never really recovered from it, which is why it's been sitting here for about 10 months, doing absolutely nothing except gathering dust. So, there we go. New dress on. Take it to the plastic surgeon and let's see if we can make her into something exciting. Now you'll probably remember when we turn this on, it sounds like a, a jet engine. So let's just remember the pleasant sound that it makes. Yeah, you see what I mean? And that's before we put the extract fan on, which sounds like this. Okay, now this machine has currently got a times two, means it takes this beam that comes out of here, expands it by a factor of two, and then hopefully we've got a parallel beam that passes around the machine. Now the claim is that this tube outputs a beam diameter of two millimeters diameter. Well, from all the work that we've done, we know that that's probably not a realistic real number. It, two millimeters probably represents what they call the uh, full width at half maximum, which basically covers about probably 68% of the power that's coming out of this tube. The rest of it is at a diameter bigger than two millimeters. Now, very conveniently, this has got a very nicely aligned, you've only got to screw a beam expander into this port here, and hopefully everything then becomes a coaxial with the beam that's coming out of the tube. Now, I have to admit, I've never actually tested what's coming out of this tube. So today, for the first time, we're going to do just that. So as the beam directly exits this tube, we'll find out what the beam looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow! Right, well, let's turn that jet off and look at that. That is phenomenal. I mean, that worked its way through that 25 millimeter block in seven seconds. My 80 watt tube takes 10 seconds to do the same thing. But look at the diameter of the beam. It's very, very small to start with. We've got 20 watts compressed into a very, very small beam diameter, which means we get incredibly high intensity. The potential for this machine is fantastic. Why is it being hobbled by expanding the beam? This is potentially a fantastic cutting machine if we can keep the beam that size. Now in the last session you saw me messing around with two lenses trying to get a parallel beam 
from two very simple lenses. And it looked as though I may well have a good chance of succeeding, despite the lens theory. If you want to design a telescope or a camera or a projector or a microscope, lens theory is exactly the mechanism that you want. We are not trying to project images here. We're trying to project intensity. We don't care whether the image or the intensity gets muddled up. We just want intensity, pure and simple. And to that extent, we have to step outside lens theory and do some experiments, as I did last time, to show that, hey, the rules don't always apply. This has been manufactured according to the rules of lens theory. And it sort of works. But that's a two times amplification of that lovely beam. And as it does so, it distorts the beam into something which is not very good at all, to be honest. I've modified a three times beam expander here and completely destroyed it and put my own lens in the end from this end. I've then taken a standard lens tube with another lens in the front and the two of them slide together nicely like that. Now it's a snug fit to get it into here but it looks as though we might be able to achieve it. Well, there we go. Technically, I'm hoping that this is a times one and it will not seriously interfere with that fantastic burn that we've just had. I can't get really close to this collimator, so I'm gonna to have to pick up the reflection off the mirror. Zero, one, two, wow! Well, I think that clearly proves the point. <laughs> If you make the beam diameter smaller, your cutting improves dramatically. This was seven seconds, this was three seconds. But you can see the beam is a lot smaller here than it is here. We use the same amount of energy in a smaller beam, so we get a much higher intensity, a much better cutting beam. This tells me that I've got the beam expander set wrongly at the moment. It's set to compression mode. I don't want it set to compression. I want it set to parallel. So I've got to get basically the timing on this beam the same as the timing on this one, seven seconds. And then I shall know that I've got my beam expander set to approximately parallel. Nought, one, two, three, but look, I've run out of adjustment. So I've got to take this out and modify the assembly now. Zero, one, two, five, six, seven. Now that looks pretty damn good. Well, that's looking a pretty good match. So we'll go and check this around the machine and see what's happening. Oh, that's a nice small hole. Okay, we've modified the bulkhead hole now, so let's just give this a try. Yep, that's pretty good. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not bad, it's getting there. Zero, one, two, three, Six, seven. Wow. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So look how big the beam has got. And I don't think I can improve that. But I don't think I can adjust it to get it any better than that. Well, that is sad, isn't it? Because we've got a very good beam coming out of the expander. And we also see it just here. But as soon as we start moving away any distance, we're losing the power out of the centre of the beam. The intensity is disappearing. 
which means the intensity must be going beyond its focal point because the beam is expanding but it's not expanding to the point where it should be losing that much power. So for the moment it looks as though we're going to have to park that project as an interesting step. I'm not going to give up on it because I think that there is great potential here if we can just get this beam parallel and remain approximately the small size that it starts off at. So thank you for your time and patience and I'm sorry it's not been a completely successful but you know there's a hint of success in the air here. Well I just sat down to edit this video and uh, got myself a cup of coffee and as I sat in front of my PC I saw this tucked on the corner of my desk. Now it's been sitting there for a year and basically let's just go back. The machine was supplied with a times three beam expander which I've now modified. I spoke to Cloudray and they managed to get me a times two because I felt that times two was going to give me better cutting performance than times three and sure enough it did and on that basis I approached Cloudray to ask for the impossible. Can you find me a times one beam expander? A beam expander times one is not a beam expander, it's really a collimator. And that's effectively what I have tried to manufacture here with this device that I've concocted. And as you've seen, it's, it proves the point that if we can keep the beam small, we've got phenomenal intensity for superb cutting capability. Times two basically degrades the beam quite a lot. But if we can get times one, which is what this was sent to me as, then, hey, we've got this tremendous potential back. I experimented with this and I couldn't make it work. Basically, it looked as though it was times five or something like that. It was, it was doing something ridiculous to the beam. But at the time, I didn't really understand how this thing worked. But of course, with the experiments that you've seen me doing last time, where I was able to adjust the collimation of the beam by changing the relationship between these two lenses, well, when I look at this in close detail, what I find is several things. As I look at things in the distance, the magnification is zero. They don't do a thing. Now, that's quite interesting because that means it's one to one. The other interesting thing about it is it has the ability to change the distance between this front lens and this back lens. Isn't that what I'm doing here? We're going to try this because there is the distinct possibility that it was idiot Russ that made this fail the first time round because of lack of comprehension of what it actually did. But now we're a, a year on and my knowledge of lenses has improved. There is a scale on here which runs three plus to three minus. So I'm gonna set this to zero in the middle and just maybe, just maybe that represents a parallel beam. And what we've got is the ability to change the divergence of the beam by adjusting this scale. Zero, one, two, three, four. Well, that's a very interesting start. Let's jump down to mirror number two at the front of the machine and see what we've Zero, got. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's adjust the scale a little bit and see what we've done. Have we made it better or worse? I think I've gone the wrong way, so let's go the other way and see what effect that's having. Not a lot. Let's go right to the extreme. Put it back to the middle. 
really seems to be having more of an effect. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the difference that 500 millimeters makes to the beam. The beam is obviously expanding from this diameter to this diameter. And in the growing, look, it's lost all its intensity. And I can't find a setting in there which is any better than that. I'm, I'm going to have to have a word with Claridrow and see if there's any way that their optical company can generate something that produces the top result at one metre distance away from the tube. Because that's all I want. Now I'm not sure that anybody's going to be able to make the sort of beam expander or collimator that I'm looking for. Because collimators are based on optical principles. And by optical principles, I mean cameras, telescopes, projectors, where the assumption is that we've got a uniform beam of light coming in here and it will pass through a single focal point. All plano convex lenses with this spherical surface suffer from something called spherical aberration. Now, unless somebody can make a very special lens that hasn't got any spherical aberration, then what will happen is our most powerful rays will come through the center section here, but they won't pass through the physical focal point, which is here. They will be spread out below or beyond the focal point. Now, if I want to turn this the other way around and collect those rays, I'm not going to collect the same rays that went in because I'm not picking up from a single focal point. I should be picking up a range of focal points. So therefore, when I convert my ray back to a parallel beam, it won't have the same characteristics as it had when it went in. By trying to move the two lenses backwards and forwards, I was trying to get the best collection of intensity coming out this second lens. But after 100 millimeters or so, I lost the power in the center of the beam. It wasn't there. I think the adjustable unit that I had was designed on completely different principles called a Galilean principle after Galileo, who designed this separate beam system where the, where the rays did not cross over like this. So there are these two opposing designs that can be used for beam expanders. I used one and the other one, which we tested, seemed to have exactly the same problem. It couldn't really concentrate the power where we wanted it. I think it actually got a little bit further than my system, but not a lot further. So I'm not too hopeful that anybody's going to come back and give me a beam that is nice and parallel for one meter long, as I would like to have for that machine. But we shall have to wait and see. So for the moment, we're going to have to park this project until we get some sort of response back from China. So thanks for your time and I'll catch up with you in another session.